Waste Incineration Chronic Poisoning of the People Part 4 What happens with the countless reaction products from waste incineration plants? Since matter cannot be destroyed by earthly fire, since all atoms input into the waste incineration plants refuse derived fuels plus combustion air plus flue gas cleaning agents necessarily will come out of the waste incineration plant again. We have to analyze where and in the form of which conversion products they then can be found. Since matter is nothing else but energy, E gleich mc quadrat. Let's begin by analyzing the energy balance. Energy balance, thermal emissions. We especially have to consider that about one third in white of refuse derived fuel is water that needs to be vaporized before the fuel begins to burn. Heating up water to 100 degrees Celsius where vaporizing begins requires a great deal of energy. 2253 kilojoules per liter. The same amount of energy would be needed to lift one liter of water up to the height of 230 kilometers. The energy used to vaporize the many tons of water in the refuse derived fuel is consumed in the waste incineration plant without producing any beneficial effect. It's blown out the chimney. Another third of the refuse derived fuel consists of incombustible mineral or metal fractions that become heated to about 250 to 850 degrees Celsius in the waste incineration plant. In hazardous waste incineration plants, 1100 degrees Celsius. And are then converted to porous slag and ash. The energy needed for this conversion process is also lost from the energy recovered from the fuel. Hot slags and residual from the gas fl flue gas cleaning substantially contribute of the high energy losses and the bad energy balance of waste incineration plants. Large waste incineration plants in continuous operation emit enormous amounts of technically unusual heat, waste heat day and night from the thermal radiation convection and conduction. Most of the heat generated in waste incineration plants cannot be used to produce electricity or process steam due to technical constraints. Above all, waste incineration plants produce waste heat, useless thermal emissions, especially in our times where Tremendous regional climate changes induced by the global warming take millions of victims. This technique is unacceptable. It is really obsolete. Now the figure 3 you can see here as picture in the video shows the enormous process specific energy losses occurring in the combustion of plastics under the existing conditions in waste incineration plants. And as antithesis, the energy gained by material recycling, especially by the use of efficient refrigeration technique like the clear recycling, we will see later in this video. In this video, so. Plastic are not cuttable oil as pr propagated by the worst incineration plant lobby. An average 80,000 kilojoules of energy per kilogram must be expended until the required oil is procured 
refined and synthesized to a polymer. Afterwards, several additives are needed to finally get the molding batch as required for the polymer product. All energy used for the different production processes is lost to incineration. The remaining energy is represented by the caliphoric value of the oil contained in the polymer, however. However, not by the upper growth value HO of about 40,000 kilojoules per kilogram, as often stated by the waste incineration lobby. Besides waste plastics, loss of incombustible materials like water, broken pottery, metals, glass, stones, etc. are included in residual waste. All these are heated for nothing. This energy loss is responsible for the decrease of the theoretical upper growth calor caloric value to the eff effective lower net calorific value of about 9000 kilojoules per kilogram. In addition, losses attributable to the technical process have to be taken into account. In the end, for electricity production around 4000 kilojoules kilogram remained, about 5% of energy originally contained in the plastic. It was 80,000, now it's 4,000. Of that, another 30% must be deducted for the waste incineration plant's own power requirements, plus the fuel oil needed for backup firing. An average 30 liters per ton of waste. So the electricity yield is very small. We have to ask ourselves why electricity utility companies are so interested in waste incineration. They gain economic advantage from long contact contracts periods of 25 to 30 years until amortization and especially from the business of synthesizing new plastics to replace burnt plastics. It ensures high energy consumption. Recycling would reduce the demand for new synthesizers by converting the material of the old plastic. Recent studies employing life, st life cycle assessments lead to the same results. Flue gas. For every single ton of waste combusted inside a waste incineration plant, 500 to 8,000 5, 8, cubic meters of flue gas leave the stack. 5 to 8 tons of gas per ton of waste. As mentioned above, it contains a lot of steam due to the high water content of refused derived fuel. The softened expression alternative fuel doesn't change that. As it cools down in the surrounding air, the steam condenses to white clouds. Members of citizen action groups have heard well known toxicologic sickness praising these clouds as clean air from modern waste incineration plants in an effort to show that the German 17th Federal Ambient Pollution Control Ordinance gives the world incineration plants a clean bill of health. Actually, the steam included many exit and base formers, halogens and other waste soluble substances that will soon fall to earth again as acid rain. Back on the ground, they disturb sensitive soil life, impairing osmotic processes in the idaphone, earthworms, other smallest animals and microorganisms in the soil, to such an extent that soil fertility decreases. This not only affects the forests, 
in form of the so-called death of forests, but all plants, including those in our fields and gardens, to produce easily plants diversity. So, the huge number of chemical reactions, more than 10 high 26 per second, taking place inside a furnace and the cooling phase during the flue gas cleaning already were mentioned above. The 17th Federal Ambient Pollution Control Ordinance, 17 BIMSCHV, is supposed to officially guarantee that the flue gas plume will have to appreciable or additional impact on rural areas, clean air areas. Even for the well-known sapper poison dioxin, it specifies maximum emissions lower than 0.1 nanograms per meter cubic. It is just a marketing trick. Does the waste incineration plant or we believe that we don't care about other toxins like aldehydes, peroxides, benzenes, phenols or PAH? That the quality of the flue gas cleaning is acceptable just because of the PCDD, PCDF emissions are determined to the value that's not worth mentioning. <coughs> the countless poisonous reactions products of waste incineration plants will not be stopped by pertinent ordinance neither in Germany nor in Europe, nor anywhere else in the world. <coughs>